Welcome to the lecture uh, called Writing as an Investment. Um, this is a frighteningly brand new topic um, that um, did not exist much um, pre-indie publishing days. Um, you had a different approach to writing. Publishers had a different approach to writing. Um, writers certainly had a different approach to writing in many, many, many ways. Um, none of us, not once in any conversation do I remember over 30 years, talked about writing as an investment. It was our job, sure. We made money on royalties, sure. All of that was going along, but uh, we never, never once talked about it as an investment. Um, and one of the aspects about this is, is that there are now new terms coming in that um, apply to writing that never were thought of in writing before. Uh, one of the terms is long tail, um, and I'll explain what that means later. Um, produce model, um, which is a term that Chris and I use and other people use to explain what New York, the old New York method was. So we'll talk about that. So um, there's just lots of ways, but writing now, your writing now, can be looked at as an investment for the future. Um, in fact, with the new indie world, it's the best way. So what I'm going to try to outline here in this lecture as clearly as I can, um, because it is um, somewhat complex at times, um, as any kind of investment thinking is, um, and, and I'll, but I'll try to be clear, I, I promise, um, and there is just a nature of the beast of this in that we are making a transition right now. I'm recording this in early 2014, and we are still in this transition. And a lot of writers are moving towards indie publishing, both either with backlist or with um, their new books. Um, so it's it's a way of looking at it. It helps tremendously if you can get out of the old system. Now the problem is, is those of us who've been who grew up and made our living in the old system for decades, um, both Chris and I and other writers that I've talked to have a very difficult time making this transition in this one way of thinking right here. Um, and so basically the, a, a shorthand of saying is is that selling fast isn't necessarily nice. I mean it's always, well let me put it this way, it's always fine to sell a lot of books quickly. None of us are going to object to that. But when you're looking at writing as a long-term investment, um, if a book doesn't sell quickly but sells steadily, or even sells just a little bit along, often that's enough. Often that's enough. And that's the change in thinking here that we're having trouble because a book does not fail just because it doesn't sell a lot quickly. A story does not fail just because it doesn't make a lot of money quickly um, in this new world. In the old world, absolutely. A book was a failure if it went out and didn't sell. Um, didn't sell quickly, didn't sell enough, didn't sell up to expectations. I've heard books called failures in traditional publishing that only sold for 40,000, 50,000 copies because the expectations were for them to sell 300,000 copies. So they printed 300,000 copies and it sold 50,000 copies. Oh my, imagine as an indie publisher you sell 50,000 copies in the first couple of weeks. Yeah, that's the difference in this new world. Um, it, it's, just, it's, it's just a complete and total flip of thinking. And so I'm going to try to step by step work through this in this lecture um, and try to, to show you the different things that occur when you are thinking of writing as an investment. It ends up going all the way down into your office, into your writing office, and you have a lot more fun with your writing if you're taking it this way. If you're looking at it as an investment versus a pressure cooker that you need to have it done quickly and sell a lot of stuff. So I'll be back in a minute. We've got to do, get through some history because until you understand how it's been and how the change is, you won't completely understand the new world. So I'll be back in a minute. I'm glad you joined us for this lecture. It's, it's, uh, it's an eye-opener, if nothing else.